notice of how we're conducting this meeting and why. This is Amy Finch, City Clerk. I'm gonna be providing information for remote access to tonight's meeting as well as procedural guidelines that will be followed. Due to social distancing and the prohibition of a gathering of 10 or more people to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, physical access to the City Commission meeting will be restricted. In accordance with Kansas Open Meetings Act, COMA, the meeting can be viewed live on channel 23 and via Facebook Live or listened to by dialing 312-626-6799 and entering meeting ID code 913-1263-6625 pound. That information is also available at the top of tonight's agenda. The guidelines for this meeting are as follows. Each member of the public, staff, or presenter is required to state the individual's name and title, if any, each time the individual begins speaking or voting so that the individual can be identified by remote listeners or observers. Citizens that submitted comments by 4 p.m. today to public comments at ottawaks.gov were given to the City Commission to be read during public comment or during discussion on an agenda item. The commission must describe at the beginning of the meeting the process that will be used for a closed or executive meeting pursuant to KSA mm. 75-4319 and amendments thereto. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, I just had a blip on my phone here. Um, with that, I'll open this uh, this meeting, uh, the Ottawa City Commission's regular meeting on May the 6th at seven o'clock. And would you, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, read the roll, call the roll? Yes, I will. Mayor Wigan? Yes, here. Commissioner Kaler? Present. Commissioner Crowley? Present. Commissioner Skidmore? Present. Commissioner Jorgensen? Okay, we do have a quorum, which Commissioner Jorgensen is not here. And I want to welcome all of those who are uh, turned in on social, me social media as well as uh, by their uh, phone or by, the, by Zoom. With that, we will um, uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag and then uh, remain for the invocation by Commissioner Skidmore. I pledge allegiance Please, to the flag. To the flag of the United the States, States of America, America. And, and to the Republic, Republic which is one, stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Commissioner Skidmore. Now let's pray. Uh, Father, we come to you with heavy hearts tonight. Uh, we're mindful of the loss of an Overland Park police officer recently. Uh, we're so sorry for that. We just ask for a special blessing and comfort for his family as they go through uh, this loss. We're also mindful of the people in our community with the uh, increased number of, of the COVID-19 cases. And God, we pray for a quick healing for these people and protection for the rest of us. And God, we also thank you for all the city employees and their dedication to this community. Uh, we just pray for a special uh, blessing on them and their families and also for protection of this illness for them as well. And God, now as we uh, go about the business of the city, we just ask for your divine direction and guidance and wisdom as we make decisions as honoring to you. We give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, Mike. Sure. Um, with that, uh, we have uh, the consent agenda. And we do the, let's see, um, do we have any public comments tonight? Mr. Mayor, we do. Do you want to, normally that would come after you approve the let's, consent agenda? Okay, let's do the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor. Yes. This is Sarah Kaler speaking. I move that we approve the consent agenda as listed on the um, agenda. Commissioner Crowley will second that. Been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Approved by a unanimous vote of the commissioners present. So public comments. We do have, we do we have do. some of those. 
We do. We had a request from ORC with Chad Bruner, Brandon Stortz, and Casey Chapman to speak for ORC. <clears throat> Chad? Commissioners, can you hear me? Yeah. Good evening. This is, good evening. This is Chad Bruner, director at the ORC. Um, with me tonight, I have Casey Chapman, who is our ORC board chair, as well as Brandon Stortz, who's our recreation manager. Um, he also oversees all of our aquatic operations. We just wanted to share with you some of our information with regards to the Forest Park Pool. Uh, like Mike Hayfley and said on Monday, him and Dennis Thart, both with the city, and then Brandon and myself, we met via phone last week. Um, and like Mike said, all four of us were in agreement that the Forest Park Pool should not open this year. With that, I will turn it over to Brandon with all of our information. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Brandon Stortz. I am the recreation manager here at the ORC. A um, couple of background items for you. Um, and along with being the recreation manager at the RC, I am also an aquatic facility operator, a certified pool inspector, and a uh, lifeguard instructor. Um, over the past six to eight weeks, myself and some of our other staff have sat on an average of three aquatics meetings per week, uh, discussing swimming pools, the feasibility on whether or not they can open, and the potential planning for opening. Through those meetings, we've gained valuable insight into lifeguard safety and training, cleaning and disinfection, and various other items in regard to COVID-19. In regards to safety, our concerns lie with our lifeguards primarily. As we have seen, Lifeguards cannot train until social distancing is not in effect. Uh, this may be in contrast to what you have heard prior. However, what we have been seeing is that lifeguarding is obviously a contact specific profession. Uh, you have to be able to get into the water to rescue people. Uh, that involves direct contact and is not something that can be done socially distanced. This is also something that in regards to lifeguards, they work for three months of the year and they are then off for nine months. So we are not just talking about new lifeguards that come in. We are talking about all lifeguards. While we have been going through these safety procedures, we have found out that it is highly recommended, if not required, for all lifeguards to wear a mask on stand. This presents a heat hazard for our lifeguards as we have a non-air conditioned facility. Uh, we then run the risk of heat stroke, heat exhaustion, uh, and miscellaneous other uh, heat related safety concerns. The other concern with this is in regard to COVID-19 itself and how it will be treated uh, in a lifeguard and pool setting. There are varying opinions in the community and there's not a consensus in the aquatics community on this at this time. There are those in the community that believe that we should be treating this as an infectious bloodborne disease, similar to what we would treat HIV and AIDS, where we take all the proper pro procedures and protocols ahead of time. There are others that do not feel that way. Um, we have to give rest breaths when we have a drowning patron in the water. By that point in time, it is too late. We cannot appropriately use enhanced PPE while in the water giving rescue breaths to a potential patron in distress. We also have to look at sanitizer. And we know that sanitizer is in short supply. Uh, we know that enhanced PPE has been diverted to emergency management. Those types of items would likely need to be procured through emergency management at this time, as all of our suppliers that we normally go through are on back order. In regard to the facility itself, we are concerned in regard to cleaning and disinfection of the facility there would need to be substantial 
additional efforts taken in order to clean and sanitize the facility. Such, such items include cleaning the restrooms every 20 minutes. Um, every three hours, we would likely need to clear patrons from the facility and clean all contact points. And we are talking about a cleaning process that is a three-step process um, where we would use a bleach solution to clean, wipe down, and then come back and sanitize and disinfect. As such, there would be amenities taken out of service that are normally available to the public, such as the slides, the deck chairs, and, and other items such as that. We know that in Kansas that we would not be the only facility looking to close operations if so chosen. Obviously, we heard early on that Manhattan closed their pool season as well. Um, but other entities that have closed include Pittsburgh, Salina, Atchison, and Andale at this point in time. We also have some other neighboring folks in Missouri, uh, in Independence, Missouri, and in St. Joseph, Missouri, who have also canceled. This is not something that is recommended lightly. Um, it is something that, that, to be very honest with you, uh, kind of breaks my heart in a way as uh, I am a pool person, I am aquatics professional, um, but for the safety and well-being of our staff and our patrons, we believe this would be the best decision made for our community. Well, thank you very much. That's pretty thorough coverage of the reasons uh, why. Did anyone else want to speak on that, to that? Uh, Commissioner Skidmore, I just had a question. Is there any chance we could open the waiting pools down there? Do they require lifeguards? I don't believe that the waiting pools would be able to be opened. Uh, those were actually one of the first amenities that we looked at taking out of commission. Um, from a standpoint of traffic flow in the facility, we would if we were to have opened the facility, the traffic flow would have needed to be diverted quite substantially. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of the current configuration, but where the concession stand is currently at, there is a gate. That would have turned into our entrance gate. Everything would have been one way in, one way out. And so you would have entered the pool facility from, from the concession gate in order to use the restroom, you would go through the restrooms and then back out and around through the waiting pool areas to re-enter the pool. Um, again, in order to create a properly socially distanced uh, traffic way so we avoided any sort of congregating or anything of that nature. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, well, it is going to be a long, hot, dry summer without a pool for, for many, but we live in times that we have to do these kind of things. Um, are, are you asking the commission to approve this decision, or are you just announcing that that's what's going to go on and we understand that? I would defer that to Chad. This is Chad. We were, we, we've been in discussion with uh, Mr. Hayfley. Uh, and with the city and all that. Um, so I'll leave that part of it up to Mr. Hayley, Mike. Would the, would, would the commissioners want to weigh in on this, Sarah? Do you have anything to add to this discussion or to recommend? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I got disconnected from the meeting. So I'm, I'm just getting back in. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure what has happened. So if you give me just a second, I'm sure others have questions and then I can chime in. Well, they had a pretty thorough discussion of the reasons why as far as social distancing, as far as rescuing in the pool, lifeguard danger um, and resuscitation danger okay. and sure. the access to the pool house and those kind of things. And I and I heard that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I do have a couple questions for um, somebody from ORC. I'm wondering, it sounds like um, this uh, decision came with a, a small little group of individuals. Who did you talk to? Who did you consult with 
beyond um, national individuals? I mean, locally, who did you consult with? I'm sure you probably consulted with the ORC board. You guys probably met together and had that conversation. You probably talked to our local health professionals and, and those kind of places, right? Yes, we uh, talked as a staff. Um, that's why I have our board chair on here, Casey Chapman. Um, we talked to our board. Uh, we've also been talking with um, area people in the state. Um, and we've also been talking with uh, people from the city as well. Uh, so we've talked to a variety of different people here. And so your board completely, um, you had a board meeting and you had this discussion, correct? We've communicated to with our board um, individually as we saw fit. Uh, Casey, you want to chime in? Mike there. Casey's still here. But anyway, you did consult with other pool operators, other. Uh, and I, I'm sure, Chad, you talked to you talked to Dr. Ransom and to people at the health department, right? Before you made. We've been, your in, communi we've been in communication with the health department through a variety of these things, uh, as far as how do we reopen it and what phase we reopen. Um, as far as the pool is concerned, we hadn't got, I'll be honest, we hadn't got to that part yet. This was something that we have been in talks with people around the state, um, people with in our organization, people within the city's organization as well. Okay. So, but you, it sounds like you've already made your decision, right? I mean, so. That's the decision we're leaning towards, yes. Well, this is Commissioner Skidmore. As much as it pains me, I, I agree with you. We support your decision. I think it's better to play it safe. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, when it gets down to it, you really had no decision at all. It was just to close it. And I think it's the safest way to go. Commissioners, this is Brandon Stortz again. Um, in, in regard to Commissioner Kaler's question, I have sat on phone calls with the CDC um, other area pool operators. Uh, the Kansas City Metro Aquatics Council uh, is something that I am a part of and we have held regular meetings in regard to this. I've also sat on our registering bodies meetings in regard to training, how we would train lifeguards, how we would certify those folks, uh, all sorts of, of different things. Um, so we do believe that, that we have been thoroughly uh, communicating with with folks on this particular topic and, and so i know i spoke with um another mayor in in one of the um casey metro areas today and it depend it indicated he had indicated that um his uh town had or his city had considered waiting until um a few more weeks just to really decide what they're going to do and so they had not made that decision is that something that you had considered Commissioner Brandon Swartz again. Yes, all, all options were on the table in this. Uh, we had opening plans that went into July on this. Um, right now, we are looking at the potential to open the pool no earlier than July 13th at this point in time, given the information that we have been given from Dr. Ransom. Uh, on the county commission meeting, he noted that he did expect uh, phase one to last four weeks in Franklin County. Given that information, and also given that we cannot train any of our lifeguards until the phase out period, that would put us at right around July 1st before we could even get into the pool. Um, so get another Brandon, two weeks for training. Yeah, so Brandon, this is Sarah Kaler speaking. Um, I, I listened to the same meeting that you listened to, and I don't believe that Dr. Ransom said he expects it to be four weeks. I don't want the public to hear this and hear that we are telling them other data right. that is not what has happened. So Dr. Ransom at no point said Franklin County is choosing to go four weeks. That, that is, is correct. not the case. That is correct. They will be reevaluating that. He did mention the possibility. Um, we have been taking that all into account when we when we look at these dates and potential opening. 
Okay. Any other discussion? Do we want to uh, want to wait? You normally wouldn't open a pool until Memorial Day weekend, anyway, would you? That is correct. So we, so we could uh, think about this, work on it, and uh, do it at our what have we got? The twenty twenty seventh or the twentieth? Uh, we have, is our next general session. Um, what's the uh, what's the consensus of the commission? I think I think that they've made a the good case for closing the pool. I doubt that that'll change between now and then, but we we have time. Time is our friend right now. I guess I don't see why we're hurrying to make that decision. I mean, it sounds like yes, that the decision has been made. However, are we in a hurry to make the decision? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, no. I don't. I, think know. We can, I don't. I think, we don't know what we don't know. I think what we we can tread water for a while. To use the technical <laughs> term. Uh, so, commissioners, Brandon Swartz again. The the urgency is in regards to our lifeguards and them being able to find other summer employment. Um, that is the big concern in regard to to this and why a sense of urgency has been felt. Um, we feel that we need to let our lifeguards know as soon as possible. That way they can procure other employment if possible. Uh, this is Mayor uh, Tom Wigand. I, uh, I, I really see no reason and I know, see no um, uh, thought or process or encouragement that this thing's gonna go away in the next two weeks, the next month, the next six weeks, all summer. So if they need, um, our approval or our consensus that they're making the right decision. I, I don't know why we couldn't give that tonight. I I have to, uh, Sarah Kaler speaking, I have to disagree, Mayor. I, okay. I don't, like I said, I don't see the reason think, for, I mean, I recognize, and, and Brandon, I recognize that you want to give your lifeguards, um, your lifeguards ample notice. Um, those lifeguards are also my friend's children, or my children's friends. and. They're teenagers, and no one is guaranteed a job right now. Not a soul one. None of us on this call, nobody is guaranteed a job right now. Everything is on the table. So I think waiting two weeks is not a bad idea. Except for the lifeguards. Um, anybody else want to weigh in on this? Blake, were you here for the earlier? I saw you you joined us a little bit late there. Um, did you have yeah, any questions? Yeah, I, I uh, was listening on the radio. Um, I had some technical problems. Um, I guess I would agree with uh, Sarah at this time. Um, um, I don't know that we need, need to make a decision tonight. I, I'd rather look into it a little bit further. Okay. Everybody agree with that? All right. Well, let's uh, let's table this then until the uh, uh, next general uh, regular meeting. Pull it up. It'll be the um, 20th. So let's uh, have it on the agenda then for, um, for approval or just further discussion. Thank you guys for coming in tonight and making that presentation. We will move on um to item 10 the declaration at this time i'd like to give the commissioner a chance to declare any conflict or communication they've had that might influence our ability to consider today's issues impartially <clears throat> any any problems there no um madam clerk would you read item 11. i will this is amy finch city clerk speaking public hearing to hear comments on an integrated resource plan for the city of Ottawa. Dennis Tharp uh, will present the comments as part of our commitment to the Western Area Power Administration as a power resource. We provide a working integrated resource plan approximately every five years. Dennis, tell Mr. us about Mayor? it. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, if I could ask if we could go ahead and open the public hearing before the comments, one section of the integrated um, 
resource plan does ask for us to record the number of public comments and comments from the commission in the plan, and that would make okay. it a little bit neater in the record. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's open the, then the public hearing. At this time, we will hear comments from, is it from Dennis or the public? Is there any public comments on this? None? I have not, um, Amy Finch, City Clerk speaking, I did not receive any um, request from the public to speak on this item. <clears throat> okay, Dennis. Is there any more comments? Is there any Finch. remarks about Mr. This Mayor, plan? this is City Clerk Finch. I do see that Dennis Tharp is signed on um, as a participant, but I'm not hearing anything from him. Technology is amazing when it works, right? <laughs> it is. So maybe we wait a second and see if Dennis has, I'm sure he has a report about this. Sorry, <clears throat> this was Sarah Taylor speaking. It's funny that he lost uh, electrical when we're talking about it. The energy regulations here. Um, maybe we could go on. Um, I guess, though, this is the only one that requires the hearing. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Mayor, if you'll move on to 13, I'll try and locate Mr. Tharp. Um, Mr. Do we close the hearing? I'm that this is city clerk Finch speaking. I would probably defer to the city attorney on how we need to handle the public hearing if we're going on to another item. Blaine, is he in the same room? Sorry, had you had you all on mute? Sorry about that. <laughs> um, you can, uh, if you if you have opened the public hearing um you can i would like to get mr tharp on the line and complete it you can certainly table that to a time later in the meeting if necessary uh if he's not immediately available we might might give him a second to see if he comes on online let's do that we'll give it a minute here I think this is the point, this is Commissioner Kaler speaking, where Commissioner Skidmore, we need your humor. Mm, I'm completely out today. Man, <laughs> we, we expect it. <laughs> Commissioner Jorgensen, maybe you have it. I got nothing. Man, stop. <laughs> Sir, you're not even going to ask me, and I don't have anything that I... Uh, that's visible right now. You, uh, Mayor, you run the meeting. Can you all hear me? On 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 hear me? Oh my! Oh, my. What building did he jump off of? Dennis, Dennis, if you disconnect your um zoom session and just do it as a call in that might get rid of the feedback do you all hear me i do now am i there you're there Dennis. you're there <laughs> all right I don't know. I could see myself on the Zoom meeting, but nobody was hearing me. This is Dennis Sarp, Director of Utilities. And what, what you have before you is an integrated resource plan that is done uh, in, in cooperation with our WAPA contract, which is the Western Area Power Association. Uh, this contract deals details a number of things. Uh, it, it talks about our firm contracts. It talks about what we would like to do in the future related to firm contracts. Uh, 
It deals uh, to some degree with uh, renewable resources. This contract or this plan also talks about uh, reliability and efficiency strategies, uh, things we have done in the past and also things that we would like to do in the future. It uh, discusses load hitch history and future projections of, of what we believe our load might be. Uh, we love this plan. Uh, we do it about every five years. It, uh, it's a good lead in to, to the things that we do related to capital improvement. Uh, it helps us recognize deficiencies that we may see in our electric system. And it uh, gives us a way to kind of guide into our budgets as, you know, as we look at those moving forward. You all have had a chance to, to review this. Uh, at this point in time, I would stand for any questions that you may have regarding this. Dennis, you might point out, uh, Tom Wagon, the mayor, uh, maybe some of the one or two of the major plans that you may implement in the coming years, in the next few years, if possible. And uh, the first, the first major thing that, that I could bring up that uh, we, as a community, I believe have have all been interested in is uh, is some of our renewable supply. Uh, we have uh, at this point in time uh, about uh, ten and a half megawatts of, of wind energy in our portfolio, and uh, we would like to upgrade what we are doing as far as uh, solar in our portfolio, and uh, I believe on the horizon we have we are seeing some some very promising possibilities uh, to to adding a. a a solar project to to our portfolio. I believe the other one that uh, that really kind of stands out to me is is the efficiency side. We uh, we have made some strides in our community uh, to deal with efficiency in a number of ways, and mostly on the the, the commercial and industrial side, and and also from from a city perspective. Uh, we've done a lot of things with lighting and uh, and line loss, and I believe that as we move forward, that uh, in our plan is to continue to do those things that uh, that help people keep uh, their energy usage down. I would also point at point out that that is a, a very double-edged sword, yeah. Because as we do that, and as we help our customers, uh, we also decrease our revenues and and so uh, there's a fine line there that that we have to walk in in that process and i think those are two of the the real major things uh, this particular plan uh goes into detail uh, about a number of uh of things that we would like to do and we could be here all night talking about that but that's a couple of the things that that, that we have talked about that are achievable that are achievable, yes, very definitely. Any other questions during this hearing, commissioners? Okay, thank you, Dennis. With this, with this plan, Mr. Mayor, I would I would point out that um, there is a, a resolution. And I would ask for approval of this resolution if everyone is in agreement tonight and uh, will need to be signed off by you, Mr. Mayor, and our city clerk. Okay. Well, uh, we will, um, if there's no further comments, I hear no further comments. And with no further comments, I will close this uh, public hearing at 7.34 p.m. and ask the commissioners if there is a motion to approve or the other is, uh, is in a second. Mayor, Eric uh, Crowley, uh, Commissioner here, uh, I uh, make the motion to approve item 12 on our agenda. Is there a second? 
Commissioner Skidmore will second that. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion before we vote? Madam Clerk, will you call the for the vote? I will. This is Amy Finch, City Clerk. How do you vote, Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Mayor Wigan? Yes. Motion carries and uh, by unanimous vote. Okay, we move on to item 13. Proclamation recognizing May 2020 as National Bike Month in Ottawa. Commissioner Crowley, could you move, could you read that proclamation? Do you have it before you? You want me to read Bike Month? Yeah. Yep, I can do that. <clears throat> Commissioner Crowley here. And the proclamation reads as follows. Whereas the bicycle is an economical, healthy, convenient, and environmentally sound form of transportation, an excellent form for recreation and enjoyment of Ottawa's scenic beauty. And whereas through the month of May, the residents of Ottawa and its visitors will experience the joys of bicycling through educational programs, commuting events, charity events, or simply getting out and, and going for a ride. And whereas Ottawa's road and trail system attracts bicyclists each year, providing economic health, transportation, tourism, and scenic benefits. And whereas creating a bicycling friendly community has been shown to improve citizens' health, well being, and quality of life, boost community spirit, improving traffic safety, and reducing pollution, congestion, and wear and tear on our streets and roads. And whereas Franklin County Health Communities Initiative, the League of American Bicyclists, schools, parks, and recreation departments, police departments, hospitals, companies, and civic groups throughout Ottawa will be promoting bicycling during the month of May. And whereas these groups are also promoting greater public awareness of bicycle operations and safety educations in an effort to reduce collisions, injuries, and fatalities and improve health, safety, and comfort for all travelers. And now therefore, the governing body of the city of Ottawa, Kansas, does hereby, hereby proclaim the month of May 2020 as National Bike Month and urges all residents to participate in this special observance. Signed this sixth day of May 2020 by our Mayor Tom Wigong. Thank you, Commissioner Crowley. We will um, understand that does not take any action on the commission. We will move to our next proclamation. Um, would Commissioner Skidmore read the Fire International Firefighters Day? I'm sorry, I did not print that out, uh, Mayor. Okay, I will read that then. Whereas the International Firefighters Day is observed each year in May 4th, on May 4th to honor and remember past firefighters who have lost their lives while serving their communities, to express gratitude to those who have served in this line of work and to show support and appreciation for those who presently serve. And whereas, regardless of the language a firefighter speaks or the country in which he or she works and resides, all firefighters fight against the same enemy, fire. And whereas firefighters follow a long line of tradition and honor that inspires them to help colleagues, neighbors, and strangers alike. And whereas at a moment's notice, firefighters are quick to respond to uncertain situations to mitigate danger and combat the threat of destructive fire in order to protect individuals, families, and the economic being of our community. And whereas the demands of firefighting are accompanied by both personal and physical tolls that are all firefighters knowingly accept while risking their lives to protect the lives of others. Therefore, we, the governing body of the city of Ottawa, Kansas, do hereby proclaim May 4, 2020 to be International Firefighters Day in the city of Ottawa, two days ago, Kansas in the recognition of our own Ottawa Fire Department and firefighters everywhere signed this sixth day of May, 2020, by Tom Wagan, Mayor. We have two others. Um, Commissioner Kaler, would you 
be able to read the proclamation on the uh, uh, community action agency? Uh, Mayor, this is Sarah Kaler, and I gladly would would read those. However, they're they were emailed to us and they weren't in our packet, and I don't have that handy. I'm okay. sorry. Um, if you have that, that would be great for you to read. I just I'm feverishly looking for it, okay. but I, I, I don't did have happen that. to print those out. Um, so I will, uh, that's Commissioner Jorgensen, if you've got them printed out or you want the mayor to read those. I've got them on my phone here. I can, I can read, you said the community action one. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I can read that. Um, whereas, uh, community action agencies were created when the economic opportunity act of 1964 signed into law. And whereas the East central Kansas economic opportunity corporation, ECAN was established in 1966, and whereas ECAN has a 50-plus year history of promoting um, self-sufficiency for the limited income, and whereas ECAN has made essential contributions to individuals and families in Franklin County by providing them with innovative and cost-effective programs such as, as community gardens, low-cost uh, rental, housing, rent subsidies via the Section 8 program, weatherization activities, uh, services, and early childhood education. And whereas community action agencies are needed as major participants in the uh, reform of the, the welfare system as we know it. Whereas in, individuals and families on limited income continue to need opportunities to improve their lives and their living conditions thus ensuring that all citizens are able to live in dignity. And whereas the poverty rate in Franklin County is 15.8%, and whereas ECAN's community centers provided uh, programs and services to 370 families and 1,010 individuals in a service area last reporting year. And whereas Kansas and the entire United States must continue to wage war on poverty by providing support and opportunities for all citizens in need of assistance. And whereas the city of Ottawa and ECAN have worked together to meet the needs of our most vulnerable citizens. And therefore we, the governing body of the city of Ottawa, Kansas, do here pride proclaim the month of May, 2020 to be community action month in the city of Ottawa, Kansas in recognition of the hard work and dedication of Kansas community action agencies signed this sixth day of may 2020 by tom wygan the mayor thank you commissioner commissioner crowley are you available to read the uh one for police week yes sir commissioner crowley here again and the proclamation reads as follows Whereas there are more than 900,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, about 12% are women, including the dedicated members of the Ottawa Police Department. And whereas 50,000 law enforcement officers are assaulted each year, resulting in 14,000 injuries. And whereas since the first recorded death in 1791, over 22,000 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and had and been killed in the line of duty, including Captain Robert C. Cowden of uh, the Ottawa Police Department, who died in 1963. And whereas the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C., and whereas 371 new names of fallen heroes are being added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial this spring, including 128 officers killed in 2019. And whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers killed in the line of duty will be honored during the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund's candlelight vigil on the evening of May 13, 2019. And whereas the candlelight vigil is a part of the National Police Week, which takes place this year on May 11th through the 16th, 2020. And whereas May 15th is dedicated designated as National Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of the fallen officers and their families 
U.S. flags shall be flown at half staff. Therefore, be it resolved that the City Commission formally designates May 11th through the 16th, 2020 as Police Week in the City of Ottawa, Kansas, and publicly salutes the service of law enforcement officers in our community and in communities across the nation. Signed this sixth day of May 2020 by our Mayor, Tom Wygon. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. I also um, saw that Tim Mathias came on, and if we were in our chambers, we would have uh, public recognition and give them a time uh, to, to say a few words and to shake the mayor's hand. We're not shaking hands tonight, but uh, if the police chief is here, just want to speak to this proclamation or the fire chief or someone from ECAN, uh, uh, please feel that you have the floor right now. Anybody want to say anything? If not, we will. We Mr. Will Mayor, this and sign Mr. these proclamations. There's the Chief Weingartner. Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Police Chief Adam Weingartner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow commissioners, uh, city manager, city staff, and the community at large for honoring and recognizing National Police Week. Uh, it's always a somber moment and experience that we get to meet and gather in our community to honor those that have lost the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, but unfortunately this year, we don't get to do that. Like many other things in the community, uh, it's just not gonna be practically uh, possible to do that. So we will not be hosting our annual law enforcement officers memorial service locally, uh, and nor will be anyone be attending others. We will be host or uh, attending the national memorial online, which is gonna be live streamed um, next Wednesday evening. Uh, <clears throat> so I would encourage anyone who's never uh, been to Washington DC to experience that or can't get there to at least watch it online. Uh, it will certainly be as impactful online as it would be in person. This year we lost an officer from the Overland Park Police Department recently and closer to home earlier this year, uh, Officer Brian Virtue with the Wellsville Police Department who lost his life in a traffic crash while uh, reporting to work. And I'm saddened by the fact that we can't meet and mourn and honor his service uh, like we normally would and hope to one day soon be able to meet and do that uh, and honor his sacrifice. So again, we appreciate the community support uh, in everything we do. And certainly during National Police Week, uh, we feel your love. We thank you so much for your support and uh, your help with us and being our eyes and ears in this community and helping us serve you in the best way possible. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chief. Um, you know, those are those are very good and kind and profound words, and we do feel sorry, uh, sorrow over the loss of the Overland Park police officer just uh, a couple of days ago. So uh, you guys do a valuable service. You take uh, you risk your lives to keep the rest of us safe, and and we very much appreciate that as a community. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Chief Matthias. Yes, sir. Would you uh, would you want to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, fire uh, prevention week or fi uh, national international fire, fire? Yeah, firefighter day. So yeah, uh, right this here. is something yeah. new. This is something new that we participated in this year. This is our first year, and uh, May fourth marks uh, International Firefighter Day across the entire uh, world, and uh, this is something that. Uh, is will be an annual event from for us from now on and it just uh marks a time that you know uh, people can come in and appreciate uh what we do and the sacrifices we make for uh the community and citizens uh throughout the country and the world uh we have been fortunate in in our department that uh we've never had a had a have lost a firefighter but i have been in a department that we've lost couple of firefighters when uh when i was there and it, it changes you forever and so uh we just appreciate the support of the commission and, and and the city manager city staff and all the citizens uh we we couldn't do our job the way we do it currently without the support of of everyone so i just wanted to tell you thank you from uh from the chief and uh we'll be doing this uh, on an annual basis so thank you <clears throat> Well, thank you very much. You guys uh, 
uh, first responders, uh, so important uh, these days and uh, uh, so fortunate to have people that are willing to uh, do that. Uh, very necessary, but uh, a job that takes a lot of training and a lot of uh, uh, patience and uh, dedication as well as uh, risk taking. So uh, I think the city and the commissioners all join with me in, in saying thank you and keep up the good work and be safe out there. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> okay, with those, with, we move to item uh, 17. Request for approval of contract with the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, KDHE, for waste tire grant program. The grant will be used for playground surfacing at Legacy Square. The in-kind work will be provided by city personnel and the monetary max of 10,247 will be paid by Onward Ottawa. Michael Hafley would speak to that. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. What you have before you is the uh, contract agreement between the city and KDHE for, for a waste hire grant. In the past, we've used this grant to purchase recycled tires that are made into picnic tables and benches. And we have those throughout our parks. Um, this year we felt we had the opportunity to use it for playground surfacing. And with Legacy Square, um, felt that this, this uh, board in place surfacing would be a, a, a good place to try that. And this is the this is the first year that KDHE, to my knowledge, has allowed that this type of use of this grant. So, um, in partnership with On Onward Ottawa, we're we're asking for uh, asking for permission to ask, execute this grant. The grant does require the mayor's signature. So the benches are made out of recycled tires. Is that true? The benches, yes. The, the black and gray benches that we have in the in Forest Park are, are made out of recycled tires. Yes, sir. Very appropriate. When you're tired, you sit on some old tires, I guess. Bad joke for the night. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Do we have a do we have a motion to approve this grant? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Yes. This is yes. Sarah Taylor speaking. Taylor. I move that we um, approve the uh, grant for with um, kdh &E for the waste tire grant program. Okay, is there a second? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Yes. Jorgis seconds. You know what? I've lost my, okay. Can you guys hear me now? We can. Yes. I'm afraid my phone is dying. Uh, Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion about the uh, grant uh, that's not costing the city anything but some city personnel to provide some in-kind work? Uh, the 10247 will become from the uh, uh, charitable uh, funds of the Onward Ottawa project. Uh, there's been a motion and a second. I would uh, have the city clerk call the roll on this one. Yes, this is Amy Finch, city clerk. How do you vote, Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? And I vote yes. Mayor Wygand? And I vote yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 19. Mr. Mayor, I believe we are on agenda item 18. We've got 18. We jumped one. Yes. Mm -hmm. 18. Request for approval of bids for 2020 street rehabilitation. The city received two bids for the mill and overlay projects. Staff recommends the bid from Kilo Construction Inc. in the amount of $232,360.93 be accepted for the project. This was below the engineer's estimate of $250,090.25. Michael Hayfleet, Public Works Director, would you want to address us on that? Yes, Mayor, this is Mike Hayfley, Public Works Director for the city. Um, what you have before you is the, the uh, bid tabs for the, for the street rehabilitation project. As a, as a reminder, I'll read those, those uh, locations off for you. The 800 block of South Cedar, 
will include a milling overlay and a complete curb repair. Um, North Cherry Street from Grant to North Street, West 2nd Street from Maple to Cypress, and East 15th from Maine to Hickory. Um, just as a little background in the past, since I've been here, we've also done chip sealing every year. But uh, this is, I think, the largest project cost-wise that we have done since I've been here. And um, with a mill and overlay that we have to do that's needed this year, we felt that it was important to focus on, on mill and overlay rather than doing any chip sealing. So okay. Kilos, did submit the, Kilos did submit the low bid of $232,360.93. So I asked for permission to proceed with that project. Okay, is there, a, is there a motion to move forward? The Mayor Wygant, uh, Commissioner Skidden, where I make the motion we approve this low bid and I'm very thankful that it's a local company that also is a low bid. I've known John Kello since kindergarten. I know he's a good guy, good company. It's good to see this report and this uh, bid go in. Okay, uh, is there a second to that? Mr. Motion? Mayor, this, this is Sarah Kaler. I will second yes. that motion. And you made the second. Are you? Yes, Mr. Mayor, okay. I'm making the, I'm seconding the motion. This is Sarah Kaler. Okay, is there any other discussion? There being none, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes, this is Amy Finch speaking. Um, how do you vote, Commissioner Kaler? I vote yes. Commissioner Crowley? Did I lose contact with everybody? Here we go. Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Mayor Wigan? Yes. Motion carries. Now we'll move on to item 19. Request for approval of ordinance annexing land at 2730 Kingman Road into Ottawa city limits. The owners of record at the above property petitioned the governing body to annex the land containing 34.8 acres, more or less, to the city of Ottawa. The land to be annexed lies or touches the city's boundary line. Wendy Lee, Community Development Director, is available to speak. Wendy? Yes, good evening, <clears throat> Commissioners. This is Wendy Lee, Director of Community Development. Um, both item 19 and 20 are annexation ordinances. Uh, these two tracks um, were originally uh, anticipated, our attempt was to annex them last year. Um, an error when they were um, in process of being recorded was discovered. And so these uh, ordinances are repealing the original action that you took last year and adopting them for annexation properly. Uh, both of the properties were consent annexations. Um, the property owners um, agreed to do this as a part of their negotiation relative to we needed to acquire easements and rights of ways for the development around Proximity Park. Um, they are aware that we had to go through this re-annexation, um, but they, they had consented and wanted to be a part of the city. So we uh, urge you to adopt both 19 and 20 um, to correct the record formally and ensure that uh, all the steps are proper. Okay. I understand, uh, hopefully correctly, that we have to uh, do them individually, though. Yes, sir. I correct? just figured if you didn't want to call on me again, the situation is exactly the same. Okay, the same. But we we need a motion Mr. Mayor. Uh, to prove it. The main difference was the uh, address of each, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Kaler. Mr. Mayor, I would move that we approve the ordinance annexing the land at 2730 Kingman Road into the city limits. Commissioner Crowley will second that. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. There being none, would you call for the vote, Madam Clerk? I will. This is Amy Finch, City Clerk. How do you vote, Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Mayor Wigand? And I vote yes too. Motion carries. 
Item 20, we've heard the uh, recommendation from the Community Development Director. Is there a motion to approve the annexation of the 172.7 acres? Uh, Commissioner Skidmore, I make the motion we approve item number 20 on our agenda. Commissioner Kaler will second that. We moved and seconded. Any discussion? There being none, Madam Clerk, would you call for the vote? Yes, this is Amy Finch, City Clerk. How do you vote, Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Mayor Wygan? And I vote yes too. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Item 21. Request for approval of authority to execute 2020 Airport CARES Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act grant. The grant award amount is $30,000 to assist with normal operations at the Ottawa Municipal Airport due to loss of revenue during the COVID-19 pandemic. There are no matching funds uh, required from the city. Uh, Michael Hayfley would address us on this issue. Good evening again. This is Mike Hayfley with the Public Works Director. Um, what you have before you is a grant, a CARES Act grant in the amount of $30,000. This grant is uh, aimed to help sustain airport operations. Um, just, just about every airport in the country received the opportunity for this grant. The grant amounts vary, but most general, general aviation airports, such as ours, uh, received $30,000 for this grant. Um, we had the opportunity, we could have used this for, um, to help fund a capital improvement project in 2020, but the capital improvement project that we have this year is the segmented circle and the wind cone, which is, um, has been a change order to last year's project, which was the, uh, the lighted, the taxiway lighting project. So, um, we can still take this money and use it for normal operations. And that, that includes uh, salaries, um, utilities, anything that the airport is lawfully, anything that the airport can lawfully spend funds on. So I request your request authorization to, uh, to sign either myself or Richard to sign for this grant and request your approval. Okay. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Ferguson, I move to uh, approve the request to, for approval of the authority to execute the uh, 2020 Airport CARES uh, uh, grant as uh, as described. Mr. Mayor. Okay, is there, yes. Ms. This is Sarah Kaler. Kaler, and I second that motion. Been moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? I, Commissioner Skidmore, I just have a question on the amount. Was it determined by the size of our airport or our budget or how, how they decide on this 30,000, Michael? This is Mike Hayfley, Public Works Director. Commissioner, I, I, I can't honestly answer that. I really don't know. Okay. Um, when <clears throat> they announced the grant and, and sent the packet out or sent the information out, they had a long list of all the airports and, and the, the average award size for for a uh, general aviation airport was thirty thousand. Some of the larger airports, regional airports, and and international airports received a, a whole lot more, but most of the general aviation airports received thirty thousand. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, okay, uh, Madam Clerk, will you call for the vote? Yes, I will. This is Amy Finch, City Clerk. How do you vote, Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? And I vote yes. Mayor, Mayor Wygan? And I vote yes. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Uh, we move on to a uh, report by the city manager. I have a question though, first by, uh, uh, for Michael Hayfley, if he's still there. I see work being done on uh, West 15th Street. Uh, what's going on there? Um, Mary, you caught me off guard. 
I think that that work that you're seeing over there is was a uh, parking lot overlay for one of the one of the apartment houses or retirement villages over there. Okay, I, I was wondering about that. That was they were doing some survey work and uh, looked like getting ready to do something over there. But I just drove by. Yes. Thank Mayor, you. It's not a city project. Okay. We move on to city manager's projects. All right, commissioners, as you can see, uh, I think I'm enjoying the sunset in the southwest part of the United States by my background with uh, with a cowboy out there enjoying it also. So there you go. <laughs> so I have uh, about I have about five things, two of which I'll turn over to a couple other people. But the first thing I want to tell you is that we are in phase one. Uh, the entire community is in phase one of back to work. Uh, the uh, department heads and I have been working on a phase one policy that outlines how we come back to work. Uh, it, that should be finalized tomorrow and I will make sure that uh, you have a copy and it is posted on our website. Uh, you won't see much of anything different in this first phase. The conventional wisdom is that it is very possible we could be in this first phase most of May. And a lot of it simply depends upon the metrics and the metrics uh, that the governor is using is in her executive order. And it's obviously the major one is tied to the number of cases that are positive. So um, I would also say at this time that the governor issued the order. It applies to every county um, counties cannot, counties cannot implement less than what uh, the order says. Now, they could implement more, but um, I've been on a number of phone calls with, with county representatives, and our county implemented exactly what was sent out by the governor and her order. And uh, I, uh, I have to tell you, they have a tough job because they keep getting calls by the public. Um, you ought to do this, you ought to open this business, you ought to do that. And they simply do not have that authority to do. So if you could uh, help relay that to the citizenry out there, um, I'm sure the county would like to be more flexible, but they are not, the 105 counties are not in a position to be more flexible. So um, uh, we are still monitoring. Um, we have identified um, about 15% of reductions if we need to go there in our budgets. We are still working on that. We are monitoring uh, the sales tax, the property tax, and electric revenues, and I think we will have our April statements um, pretty soon. We are, we are doing it like most of the other communities are around the state. I've been on uh, several different phone calls with, uh, with other communities in them. One of them was this morning with KMU uh, communities, and uh, most of them are looking at the 15 to 20% rule. Um, so, so we're, we're not, we're, we're actually, we're still in the catch up mode. So um, right now things have stayed the same and that is good for the city and good for our citizens. As you know, the governor extended the delinquency uh, cutoffs through May, which means that um, uh, we, we cannot do the non-payment, follow our normal policies. But what finance is doing, what uh, Laurel Gimso and her people are doing is they keep reminding people. Uh, they've sent notices out. They're still reminding people um, to pay your bill. If you, if you need help with that, come in. We'll write a contract um, because what we don't want people to do is get to the end of the time period and a notice is sent out and understand it won't happen exactly when that time period ends, but a notice is sent out and that you have such a unmanageable amount that um, 
it just will be difficult to manage. So we encourage our citizens to do what they can. And we understand these are tough times. And our message is that our utility department will work with you. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Mr. Hayfley and Mr. Tharp, if Mr. Tharp's still on here. And I'd like them to talk for a few minutes about the storm earlier this week. And the, um, uh, I will say this, uh, the efforts of our uh, public works department, the efforts of our utilities department, the efforts of our police department, the efforts of our fire department were of the highest caliber. And they, um, I know that we all heard complaints, but I will tell you uh, that our departments were out there for hours. Um, and we had some help from some other areas too, making sure that the community got up and was running. So Mr. Hayfley. Mike Hayfley, Public Works Director. Um, the storm kind of took us by surprise. We had a lot, we had, if you drive around town, you can see that there's a lot of trees down, a lot of tree limbs down. Um, we were able to get the streets open back up fairly quickly after the storm. Um, the primary damage we had to the city was our North Salt Shed up on Cherry Street um, lost its roof. So we have taken that salt, the salt that was still in that shed and moved it down to the county for storage. Um, but uh, really kudos to, to all, the, all the folks that work for the city, utilities, police, fire, and public works um, for working together and, and getting things getting things open back up and and cleared up as quickly as possible. I think they all did a good job. We uh, and we will be uh, picking up limbs going forward. Uh, that that we put a notice out today that that the limb pickup will start on May 11th. Um, people are encouraged to drag all their limbs out to the curb by the street. We will not pick them, pick limbs up in the alley. They need to be out by the curb so we can grab it with the equipment and load it up as quickly as possible. Okay. Any questions there, Mayor? I, that concludes my report. But I'm, yeah, it looked like everything was being efficiently run and limbs off the street and everything after that storm that came through here rather quickly. I understand there's still some power outages north of our town, but uh, I guess we've got them all, everything, buddy hooked back up. What, um, city manager? Mr. Tharp, are you there? <clears throat> this is Dennis Tharp, director of utilities. And as with every storm, uh, there's always something different. Mm -hmm. um, we only experienced two major circuits that went down in town. Uh, those two major circuits we actually had back up within a matter of a couple hours. Uh, the storm rolled through and all of the major circuits in town, all of our circuits in town were up. The thing that happened to us in this storm is we had, well, I didn't want to really put a number to this yet, but just to give you some idea, we, we believe there is in excess of 140 different outages that affected either small areas or individual houses. When that happens, it takes a long time to get to everybody. Our crews worked straight through from Monday afternoon till tonight, quite honestly. And in a matter of 24 hours, we had basically everybody back on with the exception of some that uh, had special circumstances, maybe needed an electrician, maybe uh, parts that uh, we had to run down, those kinds of things. Uh, kudos again to, to all of our crews uh, in the city uh, everybody did yeoman's work. I know I've got folks that are uh, ready to sleep for a couple of days, and hopefully they get to do that. Um, 
I want to thank uh, the city of Garnett. We did call in help, and they were here with crew for about 12 hours that uh, had an impact, made a difference for us, and we certainly appreciate that anytime mutual aid is available. And as far as everybody back on, uh, when I talked to our, our line superintendent this evening, everybody at this point in time is back on. And, and uh, there's, there's not a lot of communities that can say that. You know, I know that Evergy even uh, has poles that are still broken and down uh, just outside our city limits. So again, yeoman's work by, by all of the crews in the city and uh, any questions I'll be glad, glad to take. Okay. Thanks, Dennis. Mayor, this is Mike Hafley, Public Works Director, if I could. Uh, yes. I, I wanted to bring out, we have also, typically we have a, a limb drop-off pile or drop-off point up on North Cherry Street, right off of the intersection of North Cherry and Enterprise. We have uh, just opened up today a secondary point down on West 2nd Street, down by the dam. People can also take their limbs down there. There's, it's uh, pretty obvious where they can take limbs. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Richard, any more? Mr. Mayor and commissioners, um, that is it. Okay. How about commissioner reports? Eric, uh, Commissioner Crowley. I would just like to wish my mother a very happy birthday today. Fantastic. And a happy Mother's Day. And that coming up, yes. <laughs> yeah, does she have one good kid or uh, it, we're or, still looking we're still looking for him. Still looking for him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Skidmore. Well, I just want to echo Dennis Tharp's comments too. How much we do appreciate our crew. You know, we never know what a day may hold. Those guys woke up that morning not thinking they'd be working the next two days in a row, I'm sure. And uh, so we do appreciate uh, Dennis pass that on to them. We really appreciate each and every one of them and their dedication to our community. That's all I yep, have. They do make a difference. Thank you. Commissioner Jorgensen? Um, I have nothing to add. Commissioner Kaler? Um. I would echo what Commissioner Skidmore said. I think that, and I bring this up probably at least once a year, that um, I think we take for granted that when we walk into a room in our house and we flip on that light switch, that the light is going to come on. And um, when things like this happen, it certainly makes you think a little bit differently. Um, I know I, I housed some friends, not over the amount that you're supposed to, but some friends that had, didn't have electricity for uh, over a day. So trying to help them out. And that's just not easy. Um, especially in these times. Uh, also, I did want to, yes, say happy birthday to uh, Commissioner Crowley's mom. I mean, shouldn't we all be saying that? So, um, and, and it is Mother's Day. So also wanted to point out that, um, that uh, a few new fun things have happened um, within our city commission family. And sounds like that we have a new grandfather um, amongst us. And um, so I hope that you are uh, taking a moment, uh, Commissioner Jorgensen, to wish your daughter Happy Mother's Day coming up soon. Uh, definitely will be. Um, been a grandfather for three weeks now, and and uh, I recommend it. Uh, Commissioner <laughs> Jorgensen, it is perfectly permissible for you to show a picture right now. <laughs> well, I there's a uh, whoops. There. I don't know if oh, you can boy. see that. Uh, oh, look there. at that. Yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a proud grandfather. That's Great. fantastic. Um, I, I don't think I have any other report except that uh, the proclamation we read tonight is just a reminder of all the people that work for us and uh, work to make this a good, safe uh, community and to address the needs of our community. Uh, all of our uh, all of our staff uh, does that. And then just to remind, I, as, as I go driving around as well as to the post office from time to time, uh, the masks are out there, not 100%, but an awful lot of them are still there, still needed. And everybody seems 
they stayed away from me before, but I know that it seems like social distancing is pretty standard for everybody right now. So um, uh, with that in mind, let's uh, close this meeting at uh, 8.19. Uh, Thank you all for all your input tonight, and um, we'll talk to you again, I'm sure, on Monday. Good night. Good night. Good night.